Welcome to our Zones 3334 public image webinar, and this month's focus is creating content. So we have a, a lot of requests for uh, topics like this because it, it is a challenge to stay on top of your content, specifically with social media, but it's also really, really important. So we're going to talk about how to engage your audience and, and some of the things that you might not be thinking of in order of it, when it comes down to creating, curating your content. Uh, just a couple of items really quick. Everybody's gonna stay on mute throughout, throughout the presentation with, uh, with the exception of the speakers. And we'll have a question and a portion at the end. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat and we'll respond as we're able. But if, if there's uh, questions that require more lengthy discussion, we're going to ask our speakers to address those at the end and then have you raise your hand as well. A couple of reminders. Uh, hopefully you're all working really hard on your club public image citation. The zones 33 and 30, 34 Rotary Clubs have the opportunity to earn this great award at the end of the year by completing monthly tasks. You started off with the July task, which was an audit of your social channels and your website. Uh, just a quick audit and check to make sure everything's up to date and current using the right branding. And then we had a content calendar and a public image plan for the next two tasks. These three tasks are foundational. They're so important to having a successful year. So they're, they're required in order to qualify for the platinum level of the public image citation that we give out, but they also have a deadline on them and that deadline's coming up. We need them to be completed and submitted by November 15th. So if you're not sure if your club has completed those first three tasks, just go to elevaterotary.org and you can check the status and you can also complete any that haven't been done at that time. The October task that's centered around World Polio Day is also available and we're hoping to have you all complete those for your clubs by the end of next month. And the November task has just been announced as well and it's centered around the Rotary Foundation. So go to elevaterotary.org, check those out, check your status and progress towards earning the citation and make sure that you're on track to get that uh, great recognition. We also launched for any uh, district leaders on the call tonight, we recently launched a Zones 33-34 District Challenge. It's a little bit different than the club citation. This is uh, tasks that are mandatory and optional that we ask you to complete by the end of April, this uh, April 2024. So there are some, some tasks that are more geared more towards club support and other tasks that are geared more towards uh, your district public image goal and responsibilities. But please make sure you visit our website if you're a district public image chair. Specifically, you want to go on there and check out the criteria, but if you're a district governor or district leader, uh, you want your, your district to receive this recognition. So please go check out this new challenge that we've issued and contact the respective uh, RPICs on our team for Zone 33 and 34 if you have any questions at all. Uh, I also want to um, just welcome you guys to visit some of the resources that are available at elevaterotary.org. We have a lot of great tools. Uh, Caroline and Sean and, and our team have really been working hard to update that website and get it get some current and useful materials. Uh, all of the recorded webinars are there and this, this webinar tonight is also going to be recorded so you can view the recording at elevaterotary.org as well as any other uh, webinars that are in that library. They're really useful tools, not just for public image shares, but really anybody in Rotary that's looking to help share the Rotary story. So check those out. Um, I do want to welcome our team tonight. My name is Susan Porter. I'm the Rotary Public Image Coordinator for Zone 34. And we also have Billy Black, who is the Rotary Public Image Coordinator for Zone 33. And then our amazing team of assistant RPICs. If you guys all just want to give a wave, everybody works you know, really hard to help provide resources and support to you. So make sure it's a two-way communication. Make sure that you're using our team, asking us questions. Uh, if you run into a snag or anything down the road, just, just make sure you have us and your Rolodex as a resource. And with that, I'm going to introduce Rotary uh, Public Assistant Rotary Public Image Coordinator from Zone 34, Amanda Groover, and she has a special guest Rotarian joining us to present tonight as well. So with that, Amanda, I, I'll let you take it away. Thanks, Susan. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Amanda Groover, and I am the Zone 34 Assistant uh, Public Image Coordinator for Zone 6900, 6910, and 6920, which is essentially the state of Georgia. And I am honored to be able to present this tonight 
with our special, very special guest, Jerry Knowlton. And with that, if you guys will give me just a second to pull up my screen, we'll get started tonight um, on our topic. And so after our last couple of presentations, we heard very loud and clearly that several of you wanted to learn more about how to create content for your channels. And so we talked as a team with Zone 33 and 34 about bringing you a presentation tonight, um, a little bit different than some of our past presentations on how to create content, but how to think better. And so we reached out to Jerry Knowlton, who is a Rotarian out of West Virginia, who knows a lot about this subject. And so I'm honored to have her here tonight. She's a professor at West Virginia University's Reed College of Media, and she is the owner of West Virginia Content Marketing Queen. Jerry, welcome. We're glad to have you. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. Delighted to um, talk about a subject I'm so passionate about too. And um, we're going to get started tonight talking about a few different subjects of how to make the most of your content as you are planning. And we all know on this team that planning is the key to having a successful content strategy. So tonight during our time, we are going to try to cover five different things during this session, starting with the thought process about how we go through planning out our content strategy. Then the key to making it all work for us successfully, how we reuse and reshare content that's already out there and available. Then we're gonna talk about how we create new content, scheduling all the content that's already available to us, and then how we stay active and engaged in our channels to make sure that all of this content we're creating doesn't go to waste and we're capturing our existing and new audiences. And so hopefully by the time we get through all of these different sessions, these different sections of the presentation, you're going to walk away having new ideas about how not only to create new content, where to go find new content, but you'll feel a lot better about how to schedule it and put it on a calendar so you're not so overwhelmed about all the things that you feel like you need to do. And so, Jerry, why don't you talk a little about, about the thought process? Sure. Thank you so much. And good evening, everyone. Delighted to um, share some time with you talking about social media. And when it comes to, um, you know, creating content, the most important thing you can do for yourself is the planning aspect of this and getting in the right mindset for being able to share information about your club to the community, to your membership, and, and all your stakeholders as well. And so when it comes to creating content, if this is new to you, I would say um, offer yourself grace and um, take ideas where you can for today. And at the end of all of this, offer yourself grace um, because we all can do what we can do in the amount of time that we're given and it's all okay. So offer yourself grace. Um, the first thing I would say is that, you know, having a dedicated time each month to do your club social media is one of the best pieces of advice that I can give. And for me, that starts at the 15th of the month. I make sure that uh, the leadership in my club know that the deadline to get content to me is on the 15th of the month. Now, does that mean I have everything by the 15th of the month? No, rarely, if ever, do I have everything I need on the 15th of the month. But it gets everybody into that mindset that they've got to start shooting that content for the next month. So right now we're working on that November content and, you know, the, um, still getting little pieces of that dribbling in as, as we speak. Um, so having a dedicated time, carving that out in your schedule, not only that time that you give your club as a deadline to get content to you, but also the time for yourself that you're going to sit down and pull the pieces together and create the calendar. Um, so make these a rock in your schedule um, every single month and you're on your way um, to a good, a good plan. Um, and then the next thing I would say, you know, there's always a lot of discussion about what platforms do I need to be on? What's right for me? 
And so I always like to encourage whether it's, you know, my students in the classroom, businesses that I serve or, or companies that I've worked for in the past, it's really important that you commit to what you can do well. And so if you have the time to do one platform well, and let's say that's Facebook, then make sure that what you're doing is quality and consistent. And if you do those two things on one platform and you get that rocking and rolling and working for you, then consider adding a second platform. And then when you feel like that's good, you can consider um, what your next steps are going to be from there. But I always recommend just starting with one. And then when it comes to the content, and we're going to get deep into this as we move along, um, I think developing your buckets of content is the next step that I would um, that I would encourage you to do. And there's lots of content available. Um, you heard it from Susan as we started today with content that's available to you just as PI peeps um, on the Elevate rotary.org um, website, but then also on Rotary International, tons of it, content available for you to work with. So we're going to talk a little bit deeper about um, content as we move forward. Next slide. So when we talk about uh, where we need to start, we talked about that you know, people are starting to get content to me around the middle of the month, towards the end of the month, and I'm collecting these. I am putting notes in my phone at each and every meeting of things that I need to remember that I want to put in our content for the following month. Um, club events are another thing that you want to uh, gather that information, any service projects that you're working on and the details that you need for that, making sure that you're reaching out to the person in charge to get that information. All of the speaker information, right? There's a wealth of um, content that you can develop with just speaker information alone. What about need to know information? What are the things that your community needs to know? Uh, I'll put this in context just for the month of November, uh, right? So what pieces of content do people need to know for the month of November? Um, holidays, right? There's lots of holidays when we start talking about November and December. And so you may have some no meeting dates, making sure you know what those are. But we talked about those buckets of information. And so if I look over here on the right hand side, these are what I call my buckets of information for uh, my club in Beckley, West Virginia. Um, that information, you know, is membership information, um, history. You can at least once a month, I try to have some piece of history that may show up in my content calendar or every other month. You can pull history from Rotary International or from your specific club. Meetings and speakers, we talked about that. And again, that's that's a lot of information that you can pull right there. Um, service projects, any community service that you're doing. Also the Rotary Foundation, November is Rotary Foundation month. And so there's lots of content available for you all um, there where the foundation is concerned events that you may have going on or events that you have sponsored or supported in some way, even if it's um, in acts of service. And then Rotary Seven Causes. This is another area that you can tap into for content if you're looking for information to get out about Rotary. Um, monthly themes, you know, we know that each month um, Rotary picks a theme and uh, as mentioned for November, the foundation is the theme for the month. And so there's a plethora of information available. Even pieces of about information about your club um, is important to share. Uh, and then any shared content, and we'll get into all of this much deeper, but um, shared content that comes from your district, from the zone, from um, Rotary International, and much more. Amanda, how about what's next? And shared content is some of my favorite content because it's content I don't have to recreate myself, and it saves me so much time. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how you reuse and reshare other content so that you don't have to be creating it yourself. So just 
For instance, let's talk about content that belongs to Rotary and Rotary's properties. Rotary.org is an excellent resource of content, like Jerry just shared, of things that you can go out and share on your club or your district's page. The news and features section of the homepage provides lots of articles, the majority of which you find in the Rotary magazine you get in your mailbox that you can go repurpose. Each month, Rotary Magazine and the news articles feature lots of content that's based on the monthly themes. So if you're just looking for articles that are centered around the monthly themes, such as or mental health or polio, or even next month on the foundation, a lot of times you can go find that content and share it on your channels and never have to worry about creating the content yourself. This month, it's been real easy to find content that's centered around our efforts in polio because there's an entirely new, separate website dedicated to polio eradication and in polio.org. You have graphics, videos, posters, pretty much anything you can think of, including press releases, local citations, all at your fingertips on in polio.org that you can go use to publish and broadcast across all of your social channels. Um, that information is right at your fingertips and you don't even have to recreate it. You can just add your club's logo to it, which you can find on the Rotary Brand Center, which also has plenty of graphics that you can just repurpose to use without having to do it yourself. I also encourage you to look at all of the sister partner organizations, institutions like shelterbox.org or little free libraries or all projects that started with some ro Rotary club at some point in time that have all morphed into much larger institutions. We still, as Rotarians, spend a lot of time, energy, and resources working with these organizations across a lot of our clubs. They have content on their, their websites that you can go reshare. A lot of us in, the, in Zone 33 and 34 still work with organizations like Hamwatch, which also have about pages that we can go reshare their content. Then, when you start getting at a much smaller level, your local community resources, such as the United Way, charity references, Speaker websites, such as the speakers in your clubs, have content on their pages that may be appropriate for you to share week in and week out on your club's pages. I encourage you to look and see if those are appropriate resources for you to give backgrounds and updates about what your club is doing, especially if they mention your club on their website as being a partner organization who's made an impact on their organization. Social channels from any of these above ref reference sites oftentimes have video. So if they have a Vimeo or a YouTube account that's talking about this content, go grab those links and share those on your pages because that video can often have a much bigger impact than any of their news stories. But please, please don't forget to look at your local newspaper and see if you can grab those headlines and share because when you start sharing other people's content from a media, you've, you've multiplied your market tenfold. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that later, about how you take your audience you create a much larger, larger audience when you start sharing other people's links on your pages. Once you get to these sites, sometimes you have to figure out what to share. And so when we think about our audience and we think about what we wanna read, that's how you kind of narrow down what kind of content you need to share. First and foremost, people love to read stories. We talk about this in Rotary all the time. Rotary wants us to share our story. My Rotary Magazine is constantly asking us to tell our stories. People are asking you, what's your Rotary story? So when you start thinking about what to share, what stories on these sites impact you? Those are the stories that you're gonna wanna share on your page. Then think about facts. We all love facts. How many of you wanna know how many more polio cases are still exist in the world? Those are the numbers that jump out and grab you on social media. Success stories. That's the things we wanna talk about. Don't talk about the things that didn't work in your club. Talk about the things that did work in your club. If you have a member who just got some kind of significant achievement award, congratulate them. If you have how-to ideas about how to do things differently, how to do a successful project, or maybe how to make an impact with your kids over the Christmas holidays, share those. New opportunities and announcements. Did your district just issue some cool new scholarship for kids in the local community? Make an announcement so that the school systems in your district know that there's a new opportunity for their students to get money this year. Those are the things that you're gonna to wanna to repost and republish on your channels that people will start paying attention to and grow your audience. And finally, here's some real live examples of these things happening in our channels. First and foremost, if there's one media outlet or one social media source that is known more than any others, 
a reuse, a republishing. It's Twitter, AKA X, whatever you want to call it. People are constantly retweeting or republishing other people's content on this source. Right here, you'll see Rotary Zone 33 and 34, two tweets back to back are where we reposted content from Rotary International. This isn't original, we're just sharing with you what RI has been posting itself. In the next screen, you'll see two posts that are specifically from Instagram, an Instagram post where people have posted things that are that are literally facts about polio or where somebody has rep repurposed content about International Day of the Girl Child, which is an event that was hosted by the Empowering Girls group. Finally, on the far side, you'll see a news article that was posted by one of the Rotary Clubs on Facebook of a story in the local newspaper that was impactful for them. That news story got likes and comments on their Facebook page. That wasn't content that they curated themselves. That was a news story that they published from local media. These are all examples of different things that were reposted from other sites where they didn't write the, they didn't create the information uh, originally themselves. They just reposted it from someplace else. Okay, so <clears throat> this is my highly sophisticated way of creating content. Um, this is what I call my scratch sheet. And with my scratch sheet here is how I plan out my content for the month. First, I always start with the speakers. For me, this is the most important thing that needs to be in my calendar each and every month. You'll notice in my calendar, on Fridays, I will put the speaker in, uh, announcing that they will be speaking the following Tuesday. On Mondays, I will do a speaker story. That speaker story I will schedule for 10 a.m. and it'll run for 24 hours, taking us right up to that Tuesday morning meeting, uh, Tuesday lunch meeting, pardon me. And then on Tuesday, I will post a regular Facebook post about our speaker. And I start that at six o'clock in the morning. So from six o'clock to 10 a.m., I've got the speaker running in on my Facebook page in the feed. And then I have the story running right up until the time uh, that they can be uh, headed out the door to come to the meeting. I always post about our alternate meetings too. So we have a breakfast club and I get that uh, slid into my calendar. I'm doing two things. I'm going to announce it ahead of time. Sometimes that's the day before or two days before. And I announce it the day of as well. I also do this with our uh, Rotary After Hours Club. They meet one time a month. And so I will post uh, prior, a week before that meeting, that the Rotary After Hours is going to meet, and then I will post the Thursday before, and then the Friday of a couple hours before that meeting starts. I also post about Rotaract and Interact. So uh, we just started Interact a month ago, and so we've now got this to add to our content calendar. And you see, I've slipped this in. The actual meeting date is on the 22nd, and then I also run it a week before, uh, making sure that we're getting eyes on that a couple of times before the meeting happens. We also have Rotaract as well. They meet on the first and the third Monday of the month, and that happens on a college campus. And um, even though it's very much tied to our club, I do like to post about it, but just that that's meeting that day. Um, more That's more for community awareness and member awareness, um, not maybe so much as the college kids themselves as they get that information other ways as well. And then you'll remember back to the original screen where I talked about there was all this other content that we have available to us. Once I get the service projects in and the monthly theme in <clears throat> into my content calendar, then I go in and I backfill with all of these other opportunities that I have to share about Rotary. Where are my open spots? And I go in and I fill in my open spots based upon these pieces of information. 
Next slide. Once I have my little scratch sheet all figured out, then I move into a Notion calendar. Um, Notion is available both on desktop and mobile. It's completely free and it's also shareable with other people. And this is where I actually build out the content. So I start putting in the days that I want to post the content, uh, what the name of the particular content is. And then right here, this says visuals. I hope you all can see this. Um, I will actually put the graphic in here and can pull from it that way. And then I create the caption that is going to go along with um, the, the post itself. I do try to keep track of what type of post it's going to be, um, whether it's a graphic, whether it's a photo, a story, a website link. And then once I'm through creating the calendar, I do go through and look at those uh, post types just to see that there's some variety in there, that I'm not posting the same type of content every single day. And then the last thing I do is I note what content pillar that I'm um, uh, representing with that particular uh, post. And the reason I do that again is that once I get my um, entire calendar filled in, I go through and see what did I miss? Did I miss uh, an opportunity to talk about history? Did I miss the monthly theme? What content pillar is missing that I want to be able to go back in and add in an empty spot? And so, oh, I do want to mention that I am happy to share um, this template. If you would like to have this template, just feel free to email me and I'll send you the template and then you can run with it yourself. Next slide. And so here's just how this kind of comes together uh, for our club here in Beckley. Um, this right here on the far left-hand side, this Economic and Community Development Month, this is a piece of content from Rotary International themselves. It's one of the monthly themes. And so I've got these all pulled down and can run that. Um, October was Economic and Community Development Month. Uh, Rotaract, we talked about that being one of my content pillars is uh, posting about Rotaract. And so I have here that it's happening on the third uh, Monday of the month. We also did a Halloween costume collection. So here's one of our community service projects that we did this month. Um, and I, we ran this a few times as well. Interact, again, a brand new meeting type of for our area just started last month. We're still working on getting the word out. We had a good turnout for the first time, but again, still getting the word out about this important um, meeting that is available. Another tip that I like to share with everyone is when we have no meeting at all, I don't post just no meeting, I always make sure they know when the next meeting is going to be and who that speaker is going to be as well. So kind of uh, killing two birds with one stone, making sure people know not to show up on this particular date. And then here's the meeting that we're going to have uh, when we come back around. And we talked a little bit about World Polio Day and the resources that are available on um, the End Polio Now site. There's tons of them. And I work that into my own design uh, for our pup pup for polio, which takes place tomorrow night. Um, and then again, uh, lastly, here's a, another example. Again, I try to feature our speakers three times. I, uh, post about them on Friday, and I put that as happening Tuesday. And then on Monday, I have the happening tomorrow story. And then on Tuesday, I'll have a regular today at Rotary post with that particular speaker. So that's kind of how I bring content together in a nutshell. And now more wonderful content information from Amanda. And so essentially the finishing with original content is typically where most people, especially people new with the PI and PR role, get a little nervous. Um, 
or maybe a little overwhelmed because once you get everything laid out and you look at your content calendar and you see the holes and you may have your content pillars or your, your topics for the month that have the blanks and you don't have anything to fill into those, those blanks on your calendar, that's where you're, you have to come up with the original pieces for your club or your district. And so that's where coming up with these original pieces or these original types of content can sometimes be overwhelming. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do something that takes a lot of time. There's a lot of ways to come up with original content for your channels. And there's a lot of different types of content pieces. So it can be a blog post. It could be a story about some of your members. You could do a press release on a, on a project that has happened or that is upcoming. You can do infographics. A lot of times people do top 10 lists about ideas for types of service projects or types of, of uh you know, top 10 things members like about Rotary is something that I saw a lot of during membership month. So, and it doesn't even have to be 10, it could be five or three. Club impact reports or district impact reports. You can talk about types of impacts that your club or your district has made on certain areas of service or avenues of service. Something as simple as people of action photos and descriptions about what is happening in those photos can be something that is filling that gap in your your calendar. It doesn't have to be a story or an article or something you spend a lot of time in. It's just a photo of something that's happening in your community with what's going on. And then any other idea that you can possibly come up with that would engage a response from the community that you're speaking to, right? It can be um, a, a repurposed graphic. It can be a reshared. We talked about the reuse of content, but it can be something that you find elsewhere that stimulates a conversation about your community that, that's in line with Rotary's ideals. It can be simply reposting the four-way test and trying to stimulate a conversation about what that means today for you. So it could be, I really encourage you to consider doing some live interviews if you can get your club members comfortable with doing some Instagram stories or some um, Facebook stories and just asking them simple questions. That's something we've started doing in my own club where I walk up to them and ask them about the four-way test or get them to tell me their favorite rotary moment and do something very simple and very short and repurpose that content throughout the course of the month. So just think of ways that get an engaged response to kind of fill into those blanks throughout the month. The second tip that I will point out, and we don't want to spend a ton of time on this, is a lot of times people say, I have all this content, but I don't have time to, to sit down every single day and post to these accounts. Well, there is scheduling software out there that's free. Um, you don't have to spend a ton of money on scheduling software to post a lot of basic stuff. There's a ton of solutions if you look for them. Buffer, Loomly, Hey Orca, Later, CoSchedule, Hootsuite will allow you, if you don't publish a ton of different things, Hootsuite has some limited op options. If you have a paid Canva account, there's some scheduling software for those people that have a paid Canva account. So there's plenty of options that allow you to take this content and go ahead and schedule it out so that you can get that stuff scheduled on a regular basis so you're not adding a ton of time. There are ways to work around your schedule. And I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about all these different platforms and solutions because we're not here to tell you to, to go buy into a software package, but it is possible to get a scheduling software out there that allows you to take all this stuff once you've written it all on your little piece of paper or use Notion and figure out a way to get it, go ahead and get it scheduled and on a calendar so that you can get it in the system and be ready for it. But if you schedule it in advance and walk away from it, please do not forget that you still have to be engaged and active. And that's something I want to reinforce that social channels and, on, and online media is designed to create a conversation with your audience. You use your online presence to create interest and awareness in your Rotary Club or your district page and in general, Rotary's global mission. And the one thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is making sure that we are people of action, not people of ignoring whoever's talking to us on the other side of a, of a video screen. And so please make sure that someone is paying attention to the notifications on your social media channels. If it's not you specifically, make sure someone is assigned that task on your team and that notifications are turned on. We need to understand the differences in each channel that we have um, a presence. So if you have a Facebook page, it's very common that somebody may leave you a message that's asking a question about that post. But if you have a Twitter channel, it, you may get 
tweets or retweets or comments on that that Twitter channel at 24 hours a day at all different times of night. And understanding who's communicating with you and how they're communicating with you makes a world of difference in how you respond. So check those posts regularly. Make sure that you're posting regularly so people don't think it's a dead account and stop looking at your post and stop communicating with you. And respond to comments because if someone takes the time to comment or actively engage with you, make sure that you're showing them the same courtesy and engage back. I would also encourage you to not only take the time to respond to people that comment to you, but take the time and set aside dedicated time for you or someone on your team to go like other people's posts. Find community organizations that are similar to yours and go like their posts, comment on their posts. If you are on a channel like LinkedIn with your club, go like and, and comment on your club members' posts. So if you have a member of your club who is actively engaged on LinkedIn and is constantly commenting on stuff about their business or is posting things about what they're doing in the community, make sure you're, you're liking what they're doing and you're encouraging them and you continue to reinforce what they're doing as a member because as they're being seen and as they're posting what they're doing about with their Rotary Club, it's just expanding your brand as a Rotarian and it's expanding their brand as a, being a member of your Rotary Club. I would also tell you that it would be, it's good for you to continue to look at ways to just like and encourage positive things that are happening in your own community. So if a local school system is doing something really great and you have an interact club that's in that school, make sure that you're continuing to, to follow and like and comment on the good things that that school that has the interact club is doing. Make sure that you're encouraging your, your local sheriff's department or your public safety officials and be that positive response within your community. Share people's relevant content. We, uh, I constantly see other um, clubs sharing stuff from Shelterbox or sharing stuff from um, about from, you know, from the UN that has to do with a lot of our different similar missions. We're sharing stuff on from World Peace Day. That's not necessarily from Rotary, but it's very similar in brand. So look at stuff that's common on a common mission and a common thread. And then collaborate with brands like your event sponsors and tag them in posts. And we're going to talk a lot a little bit more about this in detail, but if you have an event sponsor, I cannot say this enough. If you have a company that helps sponsor an event for you and pays a lot of money to sponsor your event, please tag them in a post if they are on social media and share that with them. And then hopefully they will ex they will do that same thing for you because when you tag a company that has a much lar larger audience than you in a post, and they do the same thing in return, it elevates your audience tenfold. So if your club only has 200 followers, but you have an event that has a sponsor that has 10,000 followers, then you have just created a much larger audience for yourself. And then in turn, you've exposed the good works that you're doing on your channel by that much bigger of an audience. So I would like to highly, highly remind you that if you're using a scheduling software that doesn't let you tag, then you're missing out on the opportunity to tag and expose your brand and your people. So link and tag other relevant businesses and organizations, link and tag your club members where appropriate, link and tag your speakers, link and tag all your sponsors and affiliates when it's, when it's appropriate, and always ask them to co-brand your events and share when they're spending money because that's just being a good steward of, um, them being a sponsor. You're just adding a benefit for them being a sponsor for your event. And then always use relevant hashtags, but I will caution you, please check their relevance. So if you're gonna create a hashtag for your event, make sure that it's relevant and it doesn't have some weird meaning that you're not aware of in the process. And with that said, I will say this. If you got to this, if you came into this webinar tonight and you're like, man, I wish they were going to teach me exactly how to use Canva to create the exact graphic for this blog post I was going to do, never fear. We have a ton of additional resources at elevaterotary.org's library to complete that task for you. Our, our complete video library has now provided you resources to do just about anything you're looking for. We have tips and tricks on creating cool content that from February 20th last year that in this particular webinar, you can click on that video and link when we provide you this after the video. 
We have, uh, we have previous webinars that talk about how to create storytelling. If you want to do that from the ground up, we have videos that talk about how to create videos for your club. Um, if you want to learn more about creating video directly, we have a webinar series library at this point in time that teaches you how to do a lot of that graphical creation from the, from from the novice to the beginner and so there's a lot of different ways to do it from to teach you that part of the content but today we really wanted to just focus on teaching the thought process and how to collect your thoughts and how to fill in that calendar and get you to where you needed to be so you're creating you're curating the thought process behind the content to fill in and to, to create a channel that tells a story of rotary and your club's brand so that you can attract new members and with that, we wanted to make sure we left time for questions. So, thanks, Amanda. We have a few questions here. Uh, the very first one, I want to talk to Herb. He said, after the presentation, could we have the PowerPoint presentation? This is in Canva, so you won't find it in PowerPoint but the video will be at elevaterotary.org. But the next one, uh, do you post every day on Facebook? Jerry, would you respond to that? So for Beckley Rotary Club, we're posting Monday through Friday. Um, if we are out in the community on the weekend, um, we may throw something up in a story, uh, but mostly we're Monday through Friday. Okay, and also, Tell them the difference between speaker and speaker story for your Facebook posts. So in Facebook, you have the stories, which are the images that are um, across the top of your Facebook feed. And they run um, 24 hours at a time. And so I post to the speaker store or to the Facebook stories, the speaker for the next day. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank okay. you so much. Uh, Amanda, you said link and tag several times, um, and they're not sure. They know what to tag, but they don't know what link and tag is. So could you clarify that? If you have an article, you're going to want to link the article. Sometimes that works streamlessly sometimes it doesn't right so sometimes if you copy and paste a, a link to an article into a social media um you get the little preview box and sometimes you don't but that doesn't mean that you can't link it and sometimes you can uh tag a you can do an at symbol and you can do the brand and the brand will come up but if what you're trying to do is connect your post with that company or with that article. So you're either linking back to a page or you're linking back to a brand or you're linking back to a person. And it's going to depend on the platform that you're using is going to depend on what you're doing. It's And that's essentially what it means. So if you're on Facebook, you're going to link an article and tag a person or a brand. Facebook particularly, since it's the one that's most used in um, the rotary world, Facebook business pages will only allow you to connect with Facebook businesses. Facebook personal pages will let you allow you to connect with personal, but you can tag articles or you can tag web, or you can link link articles and link web pages. Um, tw outside of Facebook properties on LinkedIn or Twitter, you can connect, you can interconnect a business and a person or a business. You don't have to be business to business or business to person. You can do both, either or. Thanks, Amanda. That's been frustrating for a lot of people from a personal page and they're trying to like or uh, tag a business and they're going, it won't let me do it. I can't find it. So thank you for clearing that up. Um, is there non-English content? Uh, this might be one uh, for Caroline. Is there any non-English content on Elevate Rotary? No, um, not at this time. However, I would suggest to, there are several translation areas, like Google has a pretty good translator. And um, very often I translate things, very fancy things by using AI, just copy and paste that into AI and it will smoothly translate this. 
That's a great idea. The reason I asked Caroline is she does a lot of the maintenance on that page. And she's really done a lot of work there. So shout out to Caroline. Um, any other questions I had here? I think we've gotten all the ones that I had, but I loved when you started, Jerry, and you said, give yourself grace. I think if we're if you're beginners in this, that's the best phrase. Just do the very best you can. It's a volunteer yeah, just, organization and, you know. I recommend just growing with your experience, growing um, with your page. And, you know, if you can commit to posting one time a week, three times a week or five times a week, do what you can do well and what fits in your schedule and your lifestyle. And then when you have opportunity to do more, you do more. There, There is an answer to... Um the translation susan says for any of the citation tasks if you'll send us an email we'll get you the french or spanish version and in chat you'll see the email address that you can use to get hold of any of us it's z34 pi team at rotary shares.org billy do you mind if i share one more um, concept that i think uh, maybe amanda and i overlooked and that is um, liking, commenting, and sharing on your own club's posts will help elevate um, your club and its exposure in the community as well. Sharing, sharing is so important um, because, again, it just opens, opens people up to what we're doing. So you post as, as Beckley Rotary Club, and then you go in as Jerry and like Absolutely. it and share it. Yes. Absolutely. And comment on it, too. It starts that engagement process uh, with the community, and it starts that two-way conversation. And Marianne says, Deeple, D-E-E-P-L, does a good job with translating. And Susan reminds you that you could do a class or um, a, you could be the speaker for your club and teach them how to do liking and sharing because there's a lot of people my age that go yeah I look at it and it's really nice <laughs> but they don't know how simple it is so you could do that just maybe a little five minute blurb for them each maybe once a month that would be great you could work on that any other questions okay uh, Amanda, do you have two more slides for me? I'm hoping. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I do. And I will say that, just for clarification, the reason I'm using the term linking instead of tagging is, a, is for those of you that start to get into the world of TikTok and some of these social media platforms that probably a lot of clubs have not used is that you will start to get a lot more into um, their specific places to link things, but you don't have the, the ability to necessarily, there's very specific links, right? Like you can, you can link certain things. So linking and tagging in some platforms are interchangeable, um, Kim. So that I know I noticed the question she was asking. It just depends on the platform you're in. Um, I'm gonna put this back up here. And Susan's back with us. Yep. Let's go right here. I think that's yep. the one you're looking for. Yes, ma'am. This is a reminder that any of you might want to come to the MAP webinar. And you say, why would I want to come to MAP? What is MAP? It's Membership Action Plan. And we're all members of the membership team at our clubs. So this one is talking about companion clubs myths and legends and one of the things that we have talked about susan and i have that it all starts with membership we can't do any of this unless we have great membership and companion clubs are something that's really working so if you have an opportunity uh, log in monday november 13th and in this case it's eastern standard time because we will have gone we would have fallen back and you'll need to register for this on DACTV. So go to November 13th. Make sure you have multi-district checked at the top. Find it and register for this. And I will send you an automatic link. 
And there um, is another one. Let's see. Pat Campbell is asking a question. Oh, C session eight on MAPS. She said it was great. Um, and this is the next one. It's called Leverage the Power of Publicity. We have not here tonight, uh, Felicia Mayek, who is one of our assistant public image chairs. She's up in Pennsylvania and she's already in the Bahamas and she's learning how to be a governor. So she'll be sliding off our team. So this will be her last hurrah. It's talking about reaching your target audience and working with um, professionals in your community. So sign in at elevaterotary.org. And it is November 27th. So it's the Monday after Thanksgiving. You can just sit very quietly and let your food digest and watch it 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So thank you so much. And remember, this one is elevaterotary.org. It's not on DACTV. So there's, we have different things going on here. So if there are no more questions. Oh, Susan says, don't forget to complete your zone challenges. So if you're trying to get um, the award or your district is trying to get the award, go on and check off that you have done the things that need to be done. There is one more question in the, Caroline, what is it? Yeah, the, the question the Q and in the Q&A, is there a Rotary approved to all Rotary standard graphics, visual library logos, Rotary messages, fun Rotary graphics, et cetera, to promote each Rotary month? Um, I, I don't know if Billy, you want to answer that or Susan, you want to answer that. I'm kind of, dying to answer that <laughs> are you dying to answer it <laughs> yes because you i am looking at a lot of I'm, I'm looking at a lot of funny or whatever people think is funny with the rotary and i got this thing now about using the mark of excellence correctly so do not forget to go to the brand center because the brand center will give you all that information and we are a, a worldwide international group. So we have to kind of respect our logo. And in order to make an impact in the entire world and in our community and to be recognized, it is important to use a common logo. And maybe Billy or Susan, you want to add to this? Yeah, I think that that's a great point. Make sure you're following the brand standards. If, if you don't download the logo from the brand center, don't use it is always my good rule of thumb. But with regards to content and the monthly themes, just follow RI's channels. They don't issue any specific graphic each month to go along with the themes, but they do produce a lot of great content as Jerry and Amanda really got into detail about. Follow their social channels, follow your district social channels. If you're a district, follow the clubs, follow other districts, follow the zones. The uh, zones 33 and 34 has uh, a lot of different social media channels where we're constantly putting out content. So it's there. And the more you engage with other channels, the more you'll, you'll see that content. Absolutely. So any other questions? Well, thank you so much for dialing in and um, we will see you next, the Monday after Thanksgiving, I hope. So thank you so much.